I'm proud of this guard for staying in the fight, but please hear me, friends. Don't draw from the drop. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Compton, California. Today's video is brought to us by 511, the pioneering purpose-driven brand making purpose-built apparel, footwear, and gear for those who demand more of themselves for the greater good. 511 field tests, designs, builds, and optimizes their products to help their consumers prepare for life's most demanding missions so they can always be ready. I love the Defender Flex jeans. Like all their pants and shorts, they are purpose-built for comfort and give you the ability to discreetly carry all your tools with extra hidden pockets, including secondary hip pockets, that are perfectly sized for your concealment needs. Visit your local 511 store today or click the link below to go to 511tactical.com for all your concealed carry clothing and gear needs. Save 20% from May 10th to 16th in store and online as 511 celebrates everyday heroes for 511 days. You can see here it's a guy in a security vest with a firearm on his hip that's kind of working the counter here. Notice there are four guys that come in and watch the guy in the back in the red sweater. He is actually going to pull a handgun top right there and go and point it at the, the clerk security guy who's going to grab his own gun and off they go to the races. And, you know, he did get a shot off pretty quick, but this perp actually shot him once in the face and once in the neck as they went. Now, our our guard did get one of these guys and hit him with a shot that these, these guys, it's not going to show it on camera, but they're going to have a running gunfight here for a minute. Then these guys are going to take off. And uh, if you go read the news story that I've linked in the description, one of them, they dropped off at a hospital about 30 minutes later. And that guy ended up not making it. He passed away and took the hospital temperature challenge for his wounds. The police have arrested one other. They have people of interest. They're pretty sure who the other two are. They are still looking for them. So if you have any information on where they are, contact Los Angeles sheriffs with that. Thankfully, our security guard was injured. Again, he was shot in the face and in the neck, but he was treated and released. So that leads me to think that it wasn't really badly shot. And we're going to think about lessons. Man, this one is a doozy and we have timing here in our lessons and there's literally no way he could have outdrawn this guy. Let's think about it. In a case like this, we notice again, our defender is wearing a, a vest that says security. He's got a gun openly carried on his hip. That of course makes him a target in this particular case because these attackers, again, you got at least three guys with guns in this particular video, uh, attackers with firearms and they know exactly who they're targeting. Of course, he's the only guy in the store, so of course he's who they are gonna target, but they know he's armed. And so this is why, unless you really have to, I recommend for private citizens that you conceal carry if at all possible, because it gives you a little bit of an element of surprise that this guy just doesn't have. I mean, if all you can do is open carry, fine, but if you can, concealment's good. Now, notice that these guys all kind of wait around. They always get to set the time and the place of the attack. They're only gonna tell you about it at the last second, and notice here we got three armed guys who are all in front of you. Now, of course, we only know that in hindsight. Our, our guard does not know that, but he is looking like a cat on a hot tin roof to me. If you look, he is really paying attention to that guy in the back. And for good reason, he's going to start the attack. Now, if I told you in advance, hey, you're about to have a gunfight against three dudes armed with guns, you know, would you want to go into that fight? Of course not. You might say, listen, if they're going to get the drop on me, I'm probably going to comply and then do the best I can to launch a counter ambush when that time is available. And that's what I would definitely recommend in this particular case. Though, again, you just got to act on what you think in the moment. But our dude's big problem here is that you notice our perp shows up, sticks a gun in his face, and this is the point where our defender decides, I need to start drawing my firearm. The problem, of course, is that the perp has his eyes on him and his gun on him, and so that means we're drawing from the drop. Never, ever, ever, ever draw from the drop, and, and I think this is a perfect illustration of why. He's going to go, oh no, what am I going to do in this case? You probably got to comply and look for a hope for an opportunity to counter ambush because instead he gets his hand on his gun relatively quickly there. That was about 0.33 seconds. It took him to get his hand on his gun. But notice again, now that's telling our bad guy, oh, I have a guy who wants to get after me and he's drawing his gun, knows it's a gun. So he is going to start the process of shooting as well. Now, 
My big problem here is that our, our clerk is going to take about a half second in the holster to hold that gun in the holster before he starts actually withdrawing the gun. And that, that kind of hesitation costs him, costs him another half second here that he just kind of holds the gun in its holster. Now, I don't think there's enough time for them to have said anything in that particular case, but because he isn't thinking get that gun out very, very quickly, he is going to get beat to the shot here. Now, his whole draw time is actually pretty good. 1.18 seconds it took him to get the gun out of the holster and fire a shot from his gun, but it only takes the perp about 0.8 seconds from the time that he starts his draw stroke to get a shot off himself. And that's exactly what we see here, is that by the time he starts to get the gun out, our perp is the first one to shoot because of that half second that he waited. So is it possible here that if he had an honest to goodness you know, a dot eight or something like that, that he could have maybe even beat the drop. It's possible, but boy, I don't think too many people have one of those in real life. And the 1.18 that our clerk had here just wasn't fast enough. And the number of people who can do that under duress on time, and even at 1.18, then we're talking about the same amount of time. And so drawing from the drop is just a great way to get shot. And that's why we say, don't do it. Drawing from the drop means he's got the gun on you and his eyes on you. Wait for him to look away. Wait for him to do something else. And you got to look for your opportunity. I don't know that this guy had an opportunity, quite frankly. I think, you know, I don't know if they were going to shoot him or whatever, but sometimes you just got to go. If you go, nope, that guy's eyes, he's going to shoot me in the face unless I go. Well, then you just got to go and you get in the fight and get shots down range. Notice as soon as he starts shooting at him, they start scrambling. And even the secondary bad guy here, I don't think got a shot on him. Also, I want you to note, notice what our clerk does. Again, he shot in the face and in the neck and he covers his head and his face when he does that. I totally understand that. I would strongly encourage you just really work on your emotional fitness so that you can think about not what just happened to me, oh no, I'm in pain, but what is happening in the moment of what you need to do to make yourself safer. Our clerk overcomes this pretty quickly here to get himself back in the fight. And I think that was really, really good for him. Took him just a bit as we see kind of backing up here. Notice he goes down as these guys start moving on him. That just having a gun in the fight gets three armed men to start moving away. So having a gun and getting back up, because that's what he did here. Notice he gets up, strafes over and starts putting shots on these guys. Now, is this a long way? I would say this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 yards or so. And so I know people who say all the time, and I hear this occasionally, people come over to me on the second channel and say, well, John, why do you train shooting past seven yards? Well, stuff like this is exactly why. These guys are absolutely a deadly threat and absolutely outside of that seven yard range. And so having those skills, and, and if again, if he was highly skilled with the gun, he might've been able to put these guys down. The other thing that I would say is that you notice he's strafing back and forth. He's going back and forth between sides. And every time he transitions from side to side, well, you want to kind of pop up where they don't expect you. The downside and the other side to that is every time you do, you give up the, the ground that you paid for by stepping out and then you give them another opportunity to ambush them, you know, you themselves. So instead, I would recommend if you've established dominance on one side, keep that dominance on that side and keep looking for work to do over there rather than going back and forth and back and forth where they might be able to get some shots on you. Eventually, again, these guys ran off. That wasn't released by the sheriff's department when they actually ran out, but they ran off. Our clerk got one of them and the other guys ran off and he was only mildly injured. I think some of that is, is a very good thing and God bless him for that. And I think that in an overall sense, hey, he succeeded and so props to him for that. But let's be very careful not drawing from the drop because it can cause us problems like this. We want to do a little bit better than that as we cover our ASP.